Are you seeking fulfillment for your life? Do you want freedom from fear? That's why we're here. Welcome to Jesus 101, introducing you to the real Jesus. And now, here's your host, Elizabeth Talbot. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Jesus 101. We continue with our series, The Battle is the Lord's. We are going through different battles in the Bible because the battles are metaphors for salvation. And for, uh, for today, we have the battle of fearfulness, which is a battle that many of us mm -hmm. struggle with. And to help us with this battle, we have Pastor Maciel. How are you? Hello, I'm well, Elizabeth. <laughs> I was practicing just to use your first name because, yes, you know, please. It's formal, <laughs> respectful, but... No, 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 we're good friends, so please call me Elizabeth. Thank and you. we are happy you're here with us. I'm so excited. I love this battle because like every battle, they get more unique, more yes. amazing. Yes, and the battles in the Bible are all metaphors of salvation. So God is telling us, look, uh, I have this. I have your salvation. I'm in control. And you can relax even on daily things. Daily things. So I have to confess okay. that... We're, we're studying this. This topic is at the forefront of my mind. Like I'm really, I'm going for it today because it is landing for me in a way that I haven't personally experienced before. Which you way? said it this way, the way we are saved is the way we live. Mm. He is intervening at that level, yes. at the level of salvation in our daily lives. Yes. It's, it's not just a theological no. truth that we will be saved eternally, but God comes into our daily battles. Daily battles. Yes. And we've compartmentalized. I certainly have. Maybe the viewers at home have done the same. This is God's stuff. We'll give him this stuff. But then, I have to handle the, all yeah. of this. Yeah. And he's saying, all of this no. is mine. Yeah. Daily. I Absolutely. Will be when daily. you are God's child, he's involved in everything. I mean, it, you know, you lost your keys. He's involved in that. Yeah. Yeah. What a specific example. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yesterday, my CL lost her keys. That's why. You but know, I found them because everything is a miracle. Yeah. He is present. He wants to show up. Uh, and that's the point, uh, that the Lord won the battles in unusual ways to teach them that he's involved in their daily battles, yes. not only on the great battle of salvation or between good and evil. And Amazing. And we'll see that here, even in, in Gideon's reluctance and yes. how long it takes him, God still shows up at every, uh, every intersection. For yes. Him. And yes. we're going to go to yes. uh, Gideon. Um, we are in the book of Judges. As you know, um, we have this pattern in Judges that they are faithful for a while and then they forget the Lord and then and then they cry out to the Lord and he sends a judge to deliver them, um, leaders to help them. Yes. And uh, that's why we have the drawing of Gideon. And what is so strange about the drawing is that they're in a military campaign, but they're holding horns and they're holding different things and torches and things that make no sense yes. in the middle of a battle, Clay right? Clay pots. So, yeah. This will take yeah, to yeah, war. Yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> so let's go for it. Uh, yes. The book of Judges, chapter 6, is where we're going to start. Okay. And uh, again, the verse before says that they've been uh, 40 years undisturbed. But then, chapter 6, verse 1, please. Right. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Yes, and here um, <laughs> it's interesting because they're really in trouble with the yes. Midianites. And we, we see here, verse 2, the power of Midian prevailed against Israel yeah. because Midian, the sons of Israel, made for themselves the, in the dens which were in the mountains and the caves and the strongholds. They're having to escape their own houses, their own farms, and going to the mountains because the Midianites are really oppressing Yes, them. this promised land that they fought so hard to gain, to live, to settle yeah. in, and now they have to run away. Yes. And they really do a number on them. They eat their crops. They the, invade exactly, everything. Exactly. That's really disrupting their lives. Yes, their and livelihoods even. Exactly. And we see how much, because we're going to find out here that um, Gideon... Actually, let's go there. Verse okay. 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak tree in Oph Ophrah that belonged to Joash and Abizarite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. Okay, so you can see already how he has disrupted their yes. lives because he's beating wheat 
in a wine press. So, so he has to be hiding, right? Like it's, yeah, yeah. Is the it wine like a press very... is not for wheat no. beating. <laughs> so the wine press is for wine press, yes. right? And so the the wheat beating usually happen at in the open field. But he's so afraid yes. that he's getting right there into so that uh, yes. you know nobody can see him, yes. and so that you can see that the, it really has you, disrupted the You have lives. to imagine his posture, yeah, right? Yeah, his yeah, like, like tiny movements. Yeah, exactly. So, and then what happens here? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, the then the angel of the Lord appeared to give and he says, the Lord is with you, mighty, mighty warrior. warrior. And you're saying, okay, who's uh, he talking to? This guy to cowering in the wine press? Yes, yeah. and he calls him mighty warrior. I, I love this about God, that he sees things that can be, yes. not exactly what they are. Yes. Yes. And he's calling him mighty warrior. I, I imagine him looking around saying, okay, is there somebody behind me? Because I'm <laughs> not, not the mighty me. warrior. It's yeah. not me. And you see how people flourish into the name that they're being called. They're being called. Even though he's not this. Yeah, he's but not this. But that's his name. He's being called this now. And he's full of questions. I, 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 I drew a question mark. You like my question mark? It's very good. That's the size of my questions usually. Yes. Well, <laughs> well uh, there, there has been uh, there, there have been stages in my life where my whole body and mind takes the form of a question yes. mark. You know, what is going on? How come God allowed this? Uh, why is this happening? And and I'm full of fear yes. and God is not doing anything about it. Yes. And so what, you know, and, and may, maybe somebody in our audience today, you yeah. are a whole big question mark yourself. Yeah. And here Gideon will have all kinds of questions. So many. Is it a yes? Is it a no? Is it a yes? Is yeah, it a no? Yeah. And, and even when we feel like we have an answer, the questions the, still come. Yes. And look at the questions that he will ask because his whole culture, his whole people, it, they're all one big question mark. What's happening? Has yeah. God abandoned us mm -hmm. or what's going on? So let's read it. Verse 13. But sir, to this, the Lord is with you, <laughs> mighty warrior. But sir, Gideon replied, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? And? Where are all the wonders that our fathers told us about when he said, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and put us in the hand of the Midian. I, he I changes love... the language too, yes. because... The Lord did not abandon the Israelites. Yes, yes, but that's how he's feeling. Yes. So, so that's that's why this 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 um this is so real yeah. to us because God never abandons no. us, but we feel abandoned when we don't have the answers, yeah. and then fear starts coming in. You know, it's it's interesting because um, I I looked in a thesaurus. I made some cards here. What other uh, manifestations of fear do we have in our lives? Yeah. And I found that fear is defined as anxiety. Mm -hmm. I am a person particularly prone to anxiety. Me too. Me too. The second one is despair. When, yes. when it, this is not going to work out, this is going to be the end of everything. Yes. This is, you know. Maybe it is because, and I'm going to stereotype us, but we have something in common that we are dramatic a little bit you know <laughs> we, you you yeah that? yeah and it, because it is nobody has you ever that, called me dramatic <laughs> i say it as a compliment mm -hmm. but it's true we go and then yeah, yeah, yeah. everything yeah yeah you can get into despair yes, by yeah. just imagining things yeah i also found worry oh you know as a as a definition of, of fear yes. or as a synonym of fear i'm shaking my head but like it's yeah, very yeah, it's agree. true right? <laughs> yeah agreeing and the one that i found in a book that really touched me mm. was that when i'm fearful is when i think that god can't that's it, exactly. That God can't help me on this, or that he won't help me on this, or that he doesn't have the resources, yeah. or he like, doesn't care, or what. Where is he? Yeah. yeah. He has abandoned. Yeah. So if your definition today of fear is, God can't handle my handicapped child. He can't mm -hmm. not handle the problem in my marriage. He can't handle the lab report that I just got. He can't handle my addiction. Of course, you'll be fearful because you can't handle it. Mm -hmm. So if God can't, then who can? Mm -hmm. But the truth is, God can and God is, and God will, uh, it's just that we need to get into that mindset, yeah. right? So let's keep going. He has all these questions, and the Lord surprises him by saying, oh, by the way, I'm, I'm sending you. What? <laughs> you know, so let's read verse 14. Verse 14. Yep. The Lord turned to him and said, go into the strength you have. Already he is speaking <laughs> yes. these things into his life, yes. and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Yeah. Am I not sending you? You who? You. You. Gideon, yeah. who yes. says. Yes. 
<laughs> this stuff was on first. Um, he says, how can I save Israel? My clan yes. is the weakest in Manasseh yes. and I'm the least in my family. And, and Listen, is... I feel like this is coming out of my journal. Yeah. Like, I'm, the least, <laughs> yes. I'm the smallest Davi Ferrer. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, the least, you. I'm the least, I'm the last. I'm, I, my, yes. my family is the least and in my family I'm the last and, and you know. Yeah. And we make ourselves smaller. We we sometimes we choose and you know the what? threshing floor. We, we are hide. small. Yeah. And and we yes. should never compare the battle with us yes. because we always will be fearful because the battle mm -hmm. is the Lord's. It's not a match for us. Yes. But we are the Lord's. It's like God is doing this to Gideon, like relax your yeah, shoulders, yeah, yeah, yeah. chin up. Yes, You've and that's what this. he does yeah. because he answers him and he says, It's not about you. He says, Surely. I will be with I you on verse 16. I will be with you. That's the answer. I will every be battle, with you. Every battle, every battle, battle, salvation, every day, yes. he says, I will be with he you. He says, I'll be with you and you shall defeat Midian as one man. Don't worry about yeah. it, Gideon. I am with you. And so uh, he's so, um, it's a sure victory because I'm with you, right? Yeah. Because the battle is mine. But he's fearful. Gideon yes. wants... Um, he, he sign. wants signs. Yes, signs, uh, plural. Sign, signs, plural, <laughs> because he keeps asking for a sign. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have been there in the past. Uh, I have. Mm -hmm. Can you please give me a sign, send a star somewhere that I yes. know that? Yes, But that's not how God works. Yeah. God says, just trust me. Yeah. But he, you know, why does he do that for Gideon in this situation? I, th I think God meets us where we are. Yeah. He has done it for a few people in the Bible, like yes. Thomas that wanted to touch. And yes. Jesus said, okay, come touch. Yeah. But, you know, it's not going to be this way. For mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, let's go on. Okay. And we have so much here. He uh, prepares a meal for his guests mm -hmm. that are talking with him. And he wants to know if he's re this is really God. Yes. <laughs> and then <laughs> the when he brings the meal, good. and yeah, uh, yeah the, the mm -hmm. meal is consumed. Yes. And then he realizes, okay, it was God. So yes. let's read verse um, 22 to 224. Yeah. Okay. When Gideon realized that it was the angel of the Lord, he exclaimed, ah! Sovereign Lord, I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. Yes. But the Lord okay, said to him, Lord. yeah, the Lord said to him, peace, do not be afraid. You are not going to die. Peace. Underline it. Take, look, I brought, I came ready. I Double it underline. All Just colors. all the, be, like, peace. peace. That's, that's what worry, anxiety. Yes. That's what that needs. Yes. Peace. Do not be afraid you're not going to die. Not in that moment and not in not the battle in the ahead. battle. And then he he names it. Yes. Uh, go ahead. Read. So Gideon built an altar to the Lord there and called it the Lord is peace to yeah. the day it stands there. I love it. This is in Hebrew, Yahweh Shalom. Yahweh mm. Shalom. We don't have any word in English that is close to Shalom because Shalom in Hebrew is much more than peace. Yeah. It's, it's the well-being of yes. knowing that you are right with God, yes. reconciled with God, that you have surrendered to God and therefore you have this amazing mm. wholeness, mm. Um, Shalom. And uh, that's what God offers him. It's, I'm with you. Shalom. It sounds as you describe it. It's like the shield that we take into battle. Yes. His shalom. Yes, mm. that's right. And and that calms our minds, calms our hearts. And God says, I am I am in charge. Yes. And so um, it's interesting because Gideon's still fearful. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he goes and starts doing the, the beating of the Lord. He goes and takes away a, an altar of Baal, if you mm -hmm. continue reading the story, but he does it at night. At night, because he's scared. I I get that, I do. Yeah. <laughs> you do? But yeah. So he's doing, okay, I'm a mighty warrior in the name of the Lord, I'm gonna go at night. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so yeah. yeah. And, uh, but there is a battle for yeah. him to, to do against the Midianites, and mm -hmm. God has to help him get to the point mm -hmm. where he will trust him. So. Uh, Gideon asked for another sign. Mm -hmm. So let's read it again, verse 36 and 37. Gideon said to God, if you will, will save Israel by my hand, as you have promised, look, I will place a wool fleece on the threshing floor. Yes. If there is dew only on the fleece and all the ground is dry, then I will know okay. that so, you will save Israel. I think he's making some progress because before he was in the wine press hiding, yes. now he went to actually the threshing okay. floor, which is a lot more public and open. Mm -hmm. and he puts a fleece there and says, okay, if you do this, I, I will know. Yes. And that's become part of our vernacular. Yeah. Yes. Have you put your fleece out? Because yeah, 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 God yeah, yeah. will meet us sometimes yes. when we need to put. Yes. But there is, that's a very good point you made, that he's already making progress. A little he's bit. He's taking a step And you out. know what? From 12-step programs, progress, not perfection. Mm. 
we all want to go from one to 10 and we <laughs> go from one to two and from two to three and from three to four. We don't usually go from one to 10. And yeah. God is so patient and says, Shalom, yes. I'm coming with you I'm the whole with. journey long. And I will, if you take a step back, I'll be with you there too. Yes. Yes, detour. Yes, exactly. I'm be with yes. You. Yeah. And he, then he says, Oh, I should have uh, asked uh, for it to be exactly backwards, <laughs> the sign that I asked, because maybe, of course, it's natural, all the water's going to yeah. go. So Even God, if it's a bowl full of water. Don't get upset, God. <laughs> Can we do it backwards? <laughs> now they let the thing stay dry and the whole thing you know, whatever and God says fine okay. Gideon will do it yes. another sign and then it's time for a battle and Gideon has all kinds of thoughts <laughs> so let's stop and uh, ponder what Gideon might be thinking I, I hate to admit it but I am very nervous. I, I, I am afraid. Okay, I don't know why God has chosen me for this. I, <laughs> I'm not cut out to, to lead people into into battle. What? <laughs> what? Plus, my family is just commoners, and I am the least in my family. I, I have never done anything remotely like this. <laughs> I am no. I am no mighty warrior. I am full of doubts. Why, why would God choose me when I have more questions than answers? Plus, if God is with us, why have all these bad things happened to us? Okay, I, you know, I need a sign. I need a sign that God is the one, is the one leading, and the God, uh, that God is the one, God is the one calling me, uh, and, and and that the victory is guaranteed. Um, I uh, am no uh, Moses. I am no uh, Joshua. Okay, I I, I was not trained uh, for battle. I need to know that God is the one leading. I need his clear guidance. I truly uh, need a sign. I need no, a sign, a sign, yes, yes, a sign. And, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. I already asked for a few signs. <laughs> but I, I am still so anxious. Uh, I know that uh, God is peace and he wants me to do this with peace in my heart, but the enemy is 135,000 strong. 135,000 strong. I mean, even if we gathered all the men in the surrounding tribes, we, we can get close to 30%. 30% that. Okay. Okay. Oh. Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to feed the anxiety. Don't. Don't. Don't feed my anxiety. God says. God says that He's in charge, and that He will supply what we need. I. I choose to believe that. Yes, yes, I will choose to believe that. Let's let's see how, how many men show up. I, I have a feeling we're just going to have to focus on something other than the size of our army. <sighs> Dear Lord, I am I, I am uh, so anxious and afraid. I um please don't get upset. Uh, but I have another request. Okay. If you were really the one leading? Uh, could you um, show me clearly? Uh, and and can you please give me your peace too? Uh, yes, I, I I need your peace. Uh, Yahweh Shalom, uh, teach me that the, the that the battle is yours. I can relate. Yeah, <laughs> I can relate to some of the things that Gideon is thinking, his anxiety, his fear. Can I get the size of army I need to meet the 135,000 people that are coming against us? Because, you know, the Midianites were a mm -hmm. mighty army. Yes. I've only and had I'm, three signs. Is this really going to happen? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> only had three signs, right? So he gathers the people. Yeah. Uh, chapter 7 is where, where we get started. And it's funny because they camp beside two mountains, two hills that the, the Hebrew root of the names, uh, chapter seven, verse one, says that the spring of Herod, I, I'm sorry, it was a mountain and a spring. Herod means trembling, and the valley in the hill and mora means fearful. So they camp by fearful and trembling. So you can- Poetic, <laughs> appropriate, <laughs> real. Yeah. They're camping I by like this mountain. Here. <laughs> yeah, they're mountain, they, exactly. They're camping by mountains that go, fearful, trembling. Yeah, yeah we yeah. belong here. <laughs> check, so, check. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So they, uh, he gathers 32,000 people, 32,000 people. Army. Uh, yeah, but the other people were, the Bible says, literally 135,000. Yes. Locusts, a swarm, yes. right? Yes, yeah. and so 
135,000, 32,000, this is not going to work. Mm -hmm. I can imagine Gideon. I thought you were going to give me a big army. Yeah. And God says, that's too many. And, and, and Gideon says, sorry, what? And, and he says, yeah, that's too many. And so he says, tell everybody, verse 3, whoever is afraid and trembling. Here we have the two names of the, the hill and the spring uh, to go home. Go home. And how many people returned? 22,000 people returned home. You got to admire their honesty. I'm like, yes, yeah, yeah, I I'm am afraid. fearing so I'm going home. <laughs> I'm gonna go. So he has 10,000 people yeah. left. And That's Gideon about is the like, size of Lacombe. I can't help but like everybody in Lacombe <laughs> is going to go conquer like Red Deer in Calgary. Yeah, okay. so look it up. It's yeah. very small. So that's 10,000? <laughs> yes, kind of? Lacombe. Okay, yeah. so Gideon has 10,000 and he's very nervous now. Yeah. And God says, that's too many. Because I, if you fight this way, you're going to think you did it. Yes. And the battle is the Lord's. The this, Lord's. Is, this is going to be my battle. Mighty warrior, this is my battle. That's yeah. right. I, I like that contrast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mighty warrior because you're with me, says yes. God, not on your own. Yeah. Right? So then... Um, he, God designs another way. Mm -hmm. They're going to dr drink from the spring and whoever drinks fast, just like that, is going to go on the battle. But whoever kneels down to drink and take their time, <laughs> they're not going to go. And you know how many he has left? He has 300 left. 300 people left against 135,000. That makes no sense. It I mean, makes no sense. If you're ever going to be fearful, this is this the moment. This is the moment. Yes. <laughs> so God is giving him signs because it's like, you don't like you don't know what's yes. coming, but yes. I'm going to be with you. I'm yes. Gonna be with and you. Gideon is obviously very fearful yes. because God is has pity on him. And, and God says to Gideon in verse 10, what does he say? Yes. We're in chapter 7, verse 10. He says, if you are afraid to attack, go down to the camp with your servant Pura and listen to what they are saying. Yeah, Afterward, you'll be encouraged. He yeah. gives them a bonus sign. A bonus sign. Yeah. And it's interesting because he says, if you're afraid, go down to the enemy camp. And Gideon goes, I'm going. Yes. Because obviously he is afraid. He really could have said, because you're afraid. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so he goes with, uh, with another person to hear what the, the enemies are saying. And they hear one person of the enemies telling the other person that they had a dream. Yes. And the dream yeah. was about Gideon. And what, what was the dream about? A round loaf of barley. This is reading from verse 13. A round loaf of barley came tumbling into the Midianite camp. It struck the tent with such force that the tent overturned and collapsed. And the friend uh, interprets it for him, verse 14. This is nothing less than the sword of Gideon, the, the son of Joash and men of Israel. And Gideon is listening <laughs> behind the tent. And he's so encouraged that, yes. that God has revealed to them that their, Gideon is going to have a mighty battle. It's so perfect. It's almost like they're reading from a script. Like yep. God is placing them to yeah. give him exactly the words that yes. he needs to hear. Yes. And because Gideon goes, oh, okay. okay, it must be true. And what does Gideon do? You got to notice, because he's given an offering before, but this word hasn't yes. been mentioned. When Gideon heard the dream and the interpretation, he worshiped God. He bowed down in worship. Yes. It's the first time that we find this whole connection of, okay, I'm now. getting the final sign yes. and I'm going to believe it okay. now. And he surrenders to it with all his soul and he worships God saying, okay, yeah. I'm going to go. I believe. And then he changes yeah. right away yeah. his posture. He yes. returned to the camp of Israel and called out, Get up. Yeah. The Lord Rush has given, given the camp. Midianite camp. I love How it. How many times has he heard it, but now, now he's he believes convicted. it. Yeah. yeah. And he has chosen faith over fear now. Yeah. And he divided the 300 men in three companies, 100 each. And of course, the Lord had told him that they had to take, you know, horns, trumpets in one side and uh, pitchers on the other. And you're like, and where are the swords? Yes. And it's like God says, okay, trumpets and pitchers. Yeah. And okay. Fine. All right. It makes no sense. It's always like the Lord does things yeah. because the battle is his. Yeah. And when I yell and I tell you, you're just going to break the picture and there's going to be a torch inside. They're going to get all confused. They're going to think a mighty army has. Yes. And of course, that's what happened. So uh, tell us about verse 22. Uh, reading verse 22, when the 300 yeah. trumpets sounded, the Lord caused the men throughout the camp to turn on each other with their swords. The army fled and just... Can you imagine the chaos yeah. and the surprise that Gideon and his army is feeling? All 300 of them. Yeah. And the victory was the Lord's yeah. one more time, like all the other battles. Amazing. Now, I have to tell you something before we end today, because we always said that all these battles are actually metaphors of salvation and metaphors of how God acts in our lives. Mm -hmm. It is not always logical. No. 
but it's the way he acts to yes. show us that he is in charge and that we can relax, right? Yes. Well, uh, there's a beautiful chapter and it's Isaiah 9. Many of you know this chapter because it's used in Christmas uh, <laughs> to talk about who Jesus is and how he would be the Prince of Peace and um, the Shalom. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting because Midian is mentioned when he's trying to teach us how God will do the battle of salvation. He says it will be done like in the battle of Midian, mm. which is the name of the battle of Gideon here. So we're going to read chapter 9 of Isaiah, uh, verses 4 on, all the way to verse 7. You want to read that? Yes. For as in the day of Midian's defeat, you have shattered the yoke, the burdens of them, the bar across their shoulders, the rod of their oppressor. Every warrior's boot used in battle and every garment rolled in blood will be destined for burning. You will be fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince, Prince of Peace. peace. Of yeah, the, and that's good. That's good. Yeah. And it says that he will have the government of his father, David. So it's interesting, isn't it? That in order to teach us how salvation would happen, God says, look, I'm sending one that is the mighty warrior. He is the prince of peace for your hearts. Yes. And he's the one, like in the battle of Midian, and it's mentioned here mentioned. in Isaiah 9. Like uh, the way that God fought and won in Midian, Immediate, this is the way that salvation has been fought for you. And, and I have to tell you, it has been won. I have to tell you that the gospel is good news. Mm -hmm. It's good news that the battle has been won. That if you are struggling with fear about your salvation and the future, you have to know that the yes. cross reminds you that you have one that has won the battle for you. Doesn't yes. that make a huge difference? It makes so much difference. We have been saying it as we've been spending yes. time together. Mm -hmm. The battle is the Lord's. Yes. The battle is the Lord's. Yeah. We've been saying it for small things and big, big things. things. Yeah, for we salvation. We remind ourselves. Yeah. So that's why I put that sign on the cross, Prince of Peace. Because how do you get peace with God? How do you get shalom? When you think about the future mm -hmm. and, and the end of the world, so many people are afraid and, and eternity. How am I going to get that? What do I have to do? And God says, relax. No need to for fear, no trembling, because the battle is the Lord and I am with you. And that's, that's the point of the gospel, right? And so the drawing that we have of Gideon has that strange look of the soldiers with trumpets and you know, torches. Why? Because God said so. He said, yes. do it this way and blow the trumpet. I'm going to confuse them. They're going to fight with each other. And you just going to watch like, wow, 135,000 soldiers against 300 makes no sense. And that's how salvation works. Yeah. It's, it's illogical. It's different than what we thought that we had to work for it. It's all about the Lord in the salvation battle and in our daily battles. So if you are being fearful right now, if you're saying, I'm the least and the last, how could I ever face this particular battle? The Lord has a message for you. And the message is, I am with you. So shalom, mm -hmm. have peace because I give you that peace. And um, the peace is not the absence of trouble. Peace is the presence of Christ yes. in our lives. So I am hoping that today you will remember that the battle of fearfulness, well, in our minds, is won with faith. Faith in who? Well, faith in the Prince of Peace, who has already fought the battle and has won the battle in our place. So, Shalom. Shalom.